Hello, and welcome to another episode of Barry White's Soulful Spoken Word Poetry Hour. Ooh, wait just a second. No, excuse me, folks, I've got the wrong show. Today, we're going to be doing video game reviews, and we're going to be talking about Vengeful Guardian Moonrider on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, this game is brought to us by the same folks who made Blazing Chrome. And if you want to know more about that game, I've got a review for it here on the channel. However, in short, I will say that I personally think that Moonrider represents some real improvement and refinement for the developers. Like Blazing Chrome, Demons of Asterborg and Xenocrisis, Moonrider aims for a look and sound that is clearly inspired by the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. The good news is that, at least in my opinion, Moonrider is the best, or at least my favorite game, on that list that I just mentioned. If Moonrider were released on the Genesis back in the day, it would have been an absolute classic and people would still be talking about it to this day without a doubt. I say that without reservation. This would have been like, you know, a Strider or a, you know, even a Shinobi 3. This would have been an absolute Genesis classic. All right, so having said that, when I compare it to modern Neo Retro Classics, okay, when I compare it to those, I would put it in a tier maybe just below the cream of the Neo Retro crop. And so what I mean is that it doesn't quite rise, in my opinion, to the level of something like Infernax, Curse of the Moon, Hunt Down, Panzer Paladin, Shovel Knight, etc. You get the idea. But so that's not to knock Moonrider at all. If you're a fan of new old school games, then I would say that Moonrider is still very much worth your time. I love the presentation, even though by the nature of the hardware that they're trying to emulate or that they've drawn inspiration from, there are some inherent challenges. You know, and what I mean by that is, for example, while the backgrounds look good, Okay, they did, they're good looking backgrounds, um, but in many cases they can also look a little bit drab, washed out, and repetitive. And also the game feel could have been improved significantly with the use of more impactful sound effects. But again, I think that they, they were trying to pay tribute to a certain type of Genesis game and, you know, even some great Genesis games often struggled with those same two issues, kind of drab, washed out colors and sound effects that were, you know, some could argue a little high on the treble, a little low on the bass when compared to, you know, the NES or, or honestly a lot of other platforms. You know, so that could be somewhat of an issue here but I take it for what it is and I, you know, I enjoyed it even though it is kind of an imperfection. You know, and then aside from that, the only other major challenge that really comes to mind with Moonrider here is the super scalar levels, okay? There are a few levels where you're moving along the Z axis and you're moving into the screen. Similar to classic games like Space Harrier, Afterburner, or outrun and that is fundamentally a pretty great idea to include that okay that has the potential to be a really awesome break in the action of you know the stuff from the style of the rest of the game and also I love super scalar games particularly space harrier I always have unfortunately in Moonrider these sections fall a little bit flat and and they feel honestly they feel like sort of an underdeveloped afterthought that didn't get the just didn't get the TLC that they deserved and i should have some footage here from this one level where you're driving on a motorcycle into the city and the buildings go by so slowly 
that it's like your character is walking into the city not riding a motorcycle like it's you'll see the footage it looks ridiculous and that's that really is a shame uh and and honestly it's an easy fix maybe they could address that with a patch but anyway it's a shame because this faux 3d effect has the potential to give a really intense sense of speed that'll have anyone sitting on the edge of their seats and just really focused, really into the game. It can be a really, really engaging experience. And instead they just kind of, they just kind of drop the ball with that whole concept. And that's a little bit unfortunate. It's not, those sections aren't like terrible, but they just, they had the potential to add so much more to the, the game. And like I said, they just fell a little bit flat So anyway, look, I'm going to quit harping on that and move on. In essence, what I'm saying about Moonrider's presentation is that I both love it and, at the same time, think it could have been more impactful. Now, I do love the simplicity of the single difficulty level and the minimal options that it gives the players. Uh, I know that some players are going to see those as negative traits, but I actually appreciate it as long as that one difficulty level is very well balanced, which in my opinion, it is here. I don't really like variables, to be honest with you. If someone tells me that they played through Moonrider, then I know exactly what that means. They played the game as it was intended because as it turns out, that's actually the only way to play Moonrider, so far as I'm aware. So let's get to it. What does it play like? Well, it's going to draw, you've probably already come to a few conclusions yourself, just looking at the footage in the background. It's going to draw immediate comparisons, and honestly, rightfully so, to games like Shinobi 3, which many people, myself included, consider to be one of the best games on the Genesis. And that's the game that it probably has the most in common with. So Moonrider has a similar character sprite size, kind of a similar-ish look to Shinobi 3. It's got a run move, it's got a running attack, it's got wall jumps, it's got hanging from bars and doing kind of a monkey bar climb across them. It's got diagonal and straight down pogo jump kicks. So those can be a lot of fun. And so like in Shinobi 3, once you get familiar with your movesets and the controls and and the enemy placements and kind of the level layouts, you can put together some really, really slick looking runs. You know, and I've only played through the game like one and a half times, so I'm not quite there yet, but there's the potential to just flow like water through this game i can see it so that's that's cool for people that are into that definitely now one of the bigger differences between shinobi 3 and moonrider is the lack in moonrider of a regular long range weapon so like in moonrider you're mostly going to be using jump kicks and your strider like sword although you will gain sub-weapons that have limited use, but more on that in a minute, we'll get there. Moonrider might also draw comparisons to Hagane, or Hagane, however you wanna say that. Um, And that is, if anybody out there doesn't know, that is a very rare and expensive Super Nintendo game. Although, that comparison between Moonrider and Hagane comes down to the robotic samurai design of the main character and his strider inspired sword swipe aside from that the game doesn't really feel like hagane and it it is challenging moonrider is challenging but it's not as hard as hagane now you wouldn't necessarily think it at first glance but moonrider probably draws as much or more inspiration from mega man than it does hagane After finishing the first level of Moonrider, you have six other levels that you can complete in any order before moving to the final two levels. You start the game with one sub-weapon, but you get an additional sub-weapon after you defeat each boss. I thought most of the additional weapons were pretty neat, 
And, you know, and they definitely have their uses. But unlike some of the Mega Man games, I don't really think that it's all that important what order you tackle the levels in. I don't see that as a good or bad thing. It just is what it is. You know, you, t- you can tackle the levels in any order. In addition to weapons gained from defeating bosses, most of the levels have one or two upgrade chips hidden in secret areas. And you can only ever equip two of these chips at a given time. And they can be game changing. And they do things like giving you a double jump, regenerating your sub weapon power meter so that you can use more sub weapon. It'll regenerate that bar over time. There's one that increases the range on your sword. And then there's one that's an, that's an armor upgrade and that allows you to take more damage. That's, in my opinion, that's one of the bigger ones. That's really going to allow you to get through the game quite a bit easier than you would without it, I would say. But with all the different power-up chips and the different weapons that you can gain, there's a lot of ways to handle the challenges just depending on your play style. So it's honestly, it's, it's a really, it's a pretty cool setup. And for those of you out there who prefer to increase the difficulty, there is a quote-unquote upgrade chip that when you equip it, will make you die in a single hit? No thanks, not for me. I know those people are out there that see that as an awesome thing. It just just doesn't sound fun to me. But anyway, one thing to keep in mind is that Moon Rider is truly an old school action game, meaning it's pretty short. I played through it at a, you know, a leisurely pace, and I stretched it out across three sessions. But it would certainly be possible to play through the game in a single sitting, if you really tried. If you have a big problem with that, then this may not be the game for you. If, however, $17 seems like a fair price for what is essentially a really good, brand new Sega Genesis game on your Switch, then I would say go for it, 100%. Moon Rider is a winner in my book, and I'm glad I picked it up. One of the biggest testaments to that fact, in my opinion, is that the day after I finished it, I decided to play it again, just to just to kind of gather my thoughts and opinions before writing this, and I unintentionally played through about half of the game. And the only reason I stopped there was because of time constraints on my schedule. So yeah, Vengeful Guardian Moonrider is a win in my book. If it appeals to you, if this looks or sounds like your kind of a game, I think that it's totally worth the asking price of $17. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of my content, one way to do that would be to just click on my channel name, and I believe that should take you to the full list of my episodes. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Please subscribe if you're into that, and like I said, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be. Bye-bye.